I don't know, has anyone, anybody not been in the first talk? I assume everyone who is here has heard the first talk. Okay, great. The first talk was even for you know, my, uh, my taste, very, very, very generic and top level. Why? Um, as I said, when I was uh, <coughs> thinking about the talk, I could give the you know, benefit of showing you the kind of symbiosis between you know, the management thinking and the, the developer thinking. I thought, okay, that's important, but that's not the gist, even more important. And then I ended up with that. The most important thing is to have a goal, to have a strategy to reach that goal and to make that strategy as good as possible. Um, so, while I, in the first talk, just wanted to make sure uh, everyone understands the urgent need for a goal and a strategy for Perl and the whole Perl community as such, um, I would like, in this talk, speak more about the how-tos. Um, we start again with a quote. Um, it's, of course, from Gordon Barr, CEO of Intel. Only the paranoid survive. Um, that's um, how I tend to work as a manager, and it has proved uh, to be okay. There are companies um, I led who were the only ones who survived after the dot com crash and so on. It's uh, something we could talk about in raising one glass or two. It's just you know, to give you, if you, um, how should I say? framework of thinking and this one applies to Perl especially because I would say 95%, 98% of Perl devs um, don't think there is a problem with the language. Yes. Uh, don't think um, it's endangered or something like that. Uh, why should it be? It was being said <coughs> that but uh, we have a renaissance, we have modern Perl and so on. Perl is okay. I wouldn't be so sure. <coughs> so, if you assume the worst, you can only have, um, you know, positive surprises. So, um, I've shown two uh, two slides with entitled therapy. Um, both of them had um, an important message, and the message was: uh, do not forget about the so-called future Perl programmer, the person who isn't using Perl yet. Uh, I told you <coughs> this developers, developers, developers thing. Developers are good, opinion leaders are better. Imagine, try it, you do not know anything about Perl. You go to the internet and you know, you look it up, Perl, or you even put an explicit question, uh, what programming language should I use? Let's say you're a PHP programmer, should I go for Perl or should I, should I go for Python? What do you think will you find out as is right now? I have not found a single web page where this question was raised where the decision has been made for Perl. Not a single one. Imagine you are a very competent programmer, not knowing about scripting languages, probably just done C or Java, I don't know, and you want to learn an interpreted language. You do not ask questions because, you know, read the fucking manual first, and so you're really competent, and you will find out yourself. You look up which languages come, you know, in question. PHP, <coughs> Python, Ruby, Perl. That's it. And so you look up, you look up the FAQ, you um, find, if you, if you type in, you know, Perl advocacy, you get first hits, um, why Perl advocacy is bad. Okay. Python advocacy, first hit, the Python advocacy how-to, which is part of the Python documentation. Yeah. 
And it's um, not perfect, but it's way more elaborated than anything that Perl has. It says basically, don't advocate, educate. And uh, brings in some interesting things. Uh, one of them being that Python adopted and has stolen many concepts from Perl. And if Perl steals from all languages, and Python steals from Perl, and so everyone steals from everybody, it's interesting. Even interesting in our, in our Python uh, advocacy hub. So, um, back on track. You have this guy, he has looked up the documentation, has come across the worst document he has seen in his entire life, which is called the Perl FAQ1, which shall be the most general document a new person sees or should see when they ask the most fundamental questions about Perl. Uh, it's hilarious. It's um, I, I thought, really, it's just joking there, but it's not. It's me, it's completely in earnest. Um, i give you an example. There's a question, how does Perl compare to other languages um, like vertical and Rex? Something you have maybe seen uh, on the, I don't know, Rex is here. That's the most important question, how Perl compares to Rex. And you know what the answer is? The answer is not use Perl. The answer is, well, you have to decide for yourself, and the uh, best you can do is you write your project in both these languages, and then decide which one suited your, your, uh, you know, your needs best. Someone probably had shut off his whole brain and just the limbic system, you know, wrote this down. Terrible. And what I want to say is, I believe, I really believe, we all um, think that Perl is great and Perl deserves more. And I also believe that we see that Perl doesn't get worldwide, global IT, the um, you know, attention it deserves. It is not one of the official languages Google uses, it's Python. Yeah, Python is younger, Python overturned Perl in all these indices. Uh, why not? Well, um, the problem is we, as you know, the core Perl diehard guys, um, I may say so because I'm visiting the, these, these, you know, why we see you for 12 years now, oh. and uh, I remember some places. Um, so we die-hard Perlers think that if we add just one more feature to the Perl interpreter, 518 meta object protocol, or if we, you know, do that great module or something like that, there will be more momentum to Perl and stuff. Wrong. Won't be. Won't happen. Won't happen unless you find out that the majority of Perl programmers, if we want to get Perl up there, still has to come. There are still potentially more Perl programmers who do not Perl right now than there are Perl programmers. So, what do you need to do? I imagine the times when, you know, at the university you've heard, have you heard about Linux? <laughs> yes. And the drive it got then. Worked for a Linux distributor company. When I started there, we were five. Uh, then grew to 500, 600 people. Um, you are CEO, you would think, oh, that this, these are the management guys and so on. No. Basically, the best service Perl programmers can do for Perl today is to act as the opinion leaders. Yes? Is to try to get it sustainably more known to others, to the newbies, to those who have no idea about Perl. 
That means advocacy, education is needed. That means perfect entry level documentation is needed, which means that what we do have needs to be completely rewritten, completely, and uh, more. So, you are the opinion leader. You are the one who on his shoulders is the way to, you know, get new people. Um, and by you, I mean we all. Testimonials, there's no such thing. I've heard, yeah, we need, you know, that documentation and automatically convert ports from CPAN and then have it somewhere. <coughs> we need testimonials. Um, I think one member of, um, of the Pearl Marketing <coughs> Committee, the Pearl Foundation, um, I've, I found him before this, this meeting and he told me, you know, I was a PHP guy for years, for a decade. And I tried everything else except Perl. And when I came to Perl, I was amazed how easy everything went. You cannot imagine what shit PHP is and so on. That wasn't a personal talk. And um, this guy told me, and we need a new attribute because that from Gabor is not so good and so on. I, you know, didn't say anything, but my opinion is. You do not need the aggregator to, you know, do just an, one new consolidated Perl news website. We need, for example, these testimonials. We need testimonials from people who have done PHP and who can testify what Perl has brought them. Yes, if it was possible. We need testimonials, for example, from people from the corporation. Yes like me, like you know, someone, someone else, as many as possible, who can testify what positive benefit, and you know, the managers can then put in the return of investment, return on investment, and so on, um, has Pearl brought to their company, to the project, to some division or whatever. These testimonials do not exist. So if you urgently need to write new material, the testimonials. Work on, on in Perl that pleases you has less value than work that pleases others, especially in movies. It's great if your work pleases all, but um, you know, sometimes uh, I get the feeling, of course, we want to have fun, we do Perl programming, I want to do this interesting project and so on. But um, well, we have ladies here, so I cannot be that, um, you know, hard speaking as, as I would be, for example, in my company. I would have said there, you know, that's kind of a masturbation. You're, you're pleasing yourself and not, in the first line, thinking for the benefit of others. And that's what's necessary here, because that's what, you know, gives you the, the leverage. Um, and I mentioned Pearl Talk 1. One hour spent <coughs> doing something yourself is almost nothing compared to one hour spent enabling others to do something. Both is necessary. You cannot just prepare work. If everybody prepares work for others, no one does it. It's not possible. But um, again, that's a lecture from management, from the companies. Uh, of course it's annoying. Of course it's annoying if you are able to do it. Uh, there are some here who know what I mean exactly. Uh, if you are able to do it in 10 minutes and now you have to explain it for 30 minutes and then you will get the result perhaps in 5 days. It's utterly annoying. But if you don't do it, your company, your you know, Pearl department or whatever, never will scale. Never. Yes. Of course, you do not want to have these completely stupid people, in quotations, who never learn. So you want to have qualified people and so on who do learn and so on. But you have to teach them, even if it, if it takes longer. Because then, after you have done this, you are, there are two of you. Yes, and then probably four. If you don't do it, imagine that tree that branches, you still keep it linear. 
Okay. Bugzilla, for example. Bugzilla is a Perl project. It's terrible to look at the code, but you know it's written in Perl. Um, it's used for bugs in the you know Perl five, for example. There are seven year old bugs longer, uh, you know, lurking there. Um, it's uh, partly used, partly is uh, you know the P5P mailing list used, and there is a Perl to do, uh, and so on. You know what? Look at uh, the Gentle Linux project, how it uses uh, Bugzilla. Bugzilla is used for core system, applications, marketing, you know, documentation, and so on. Why not in Perl? Why don't we have a Bugzilla that works so that you can put in there tickets, tickets, observations I have done while preparing this talk for the documentation, for web pages, for, you know, <coughs> missing things. Yes? So people can see it at one place, not this in the Perl to do and that's, you, you have to, to follow the P5P mailing list and probably also look at the book Godzilla. Have it in one place for all Perl things, not just the development. Advocacy. Well, educate, don't advocate, but do it and have our goal in focus. Goal, bringing new people sustainably to Perl. If you search for Python advocacy and Perl advocacy, if you search for for the you know uh, Python advocacy, you get it um, as part of the Python docs. Perl advocacy, why Perl advocacy is bad? I think it's um, done by Dave Cross, and I remember now vaguely. I have heard in a lightning talk. Um, if you read the why Perl advocacy is bad. You read things like, you know, we do not want new Perl developers. There's only so much smart people <coughs> out there. And that means if all the smart people are, are already part of the Perl community, um, uh, well, we can only lower our average. And so I, yes, and up until now, I thought it's not possible to write something. Then it gets better. So instead I propose, let all these people go to Ruby and Python instead. Let them deal with those idiots and um, so on. And you know, I have a um, special feature. I read texts until the end. Uh, so I did continue. And then it started. Um, I suggest we password protect all web pages. I guarantee you, from non perlers from newbies, from people who do not know Dave Cross, no one would have gone so far. Uh, and then, yeah, password protected. Um, let's not announce these, you know, YAPC EU Frankfurt, let's do it in some back rooms and there, and then it gets really ridiculous, and you see it's irony. It's irony, and most probably he meant the exact opposite. But that's you. That's the Perl guy who knows Dave, and you know, that's fun for us. Yeah? I wasn't so sure until three quarters of the text. <laughs> that's fun for us because it was, you know, and about a complex money laundering scheme, put money to the yet another society. So I okay, Dave, it's. Problem is, Dave Cross is part of the Perl Marketing Committee. Return on investment. <laughs> Make it as easy as possible, the entry barrier as low as possible for newbies, and make the potential reward as <coughs> high as possible. The entry barrier as low as possible. That's the first focus you have to do. Simply, with everything, everything you do, have in mind, um, if someone sees the project, if someone sees the documentation and has no clue about Perl, how should I write it? I mean, of the you know entry projects, not if you do some new Mason X extension and so on. It won't probably be the first thing a new VCs, but we are talking about the important projects. 
translators. That might come um, as a surprise. I know there exists some Pearl Thorn from 2003. It looks terrible. It was the first attempt, which does Python to Perl translation. We would need those. PHP to Perl, Python to Perl. If you urgently need to do a project, you should go get those right. And yes, we would need a Perl 5 to Perl 6. Because everything I said, I had in mind, okay, Perl 5. But Perl 6 may very well be our future. But as it looks now, I've been hearing um, talks about Perl 6 for the past 7, 8 years now. And every time the talk went the same way. Someone stood there, Damien or Larry, and did hand editing of some Perl 5 text which he converted in front of your eyes with the usual, oh, I've forgotten a dot here or something like that. And in the 20, 30 minutes, you got, you know, your translation done. I cannot take Perl 6 as long serious as long there is no Perl 5 to Perl 6 converter. So, finally, technology. Yes, it's not just about documentation. We need to work on Perl technology, there's still plenty of things to do, but it should be the right things, not the easy things, not the nice things, the right ones. For example, we have in our company big iron machines, large amounts of memory. We need it, Perl needs it. Unfortunately, if you get a machine with 512 gigabyte of RAM, it has also several cores. What do you think? Normally, one core runs. Yeah. Threading, until you get threading done, it's completely problematic. So where's the parallel for? Where's the code subroutine that can utilize new, uh, new processors? Easily, it's part of the language. Therefore, these two in bold could be another name. I <coughs> should be keywords in Perl. It's hard to do, I know. I, I know it's a shitload of work to do, but no one does it. And, you know, all computers today have two, three, six, eight cores. And why don't we have the best regex engine there is? You know, um, we've been using Perl in our company for 12 years now, and um, elf 12 years, and um, only recently we came about um, to, to use the regular expression engine really hard by doing some, you know, not just logical or expressions, but logical and, and negation and so on. And then we found out it is buggy, it's totally buggy. Okay, bug reports have been written. Um, the Regex engine, I have to say, is being worked on. Um, the Regex engine in 5.17.1 is basically a total rewrite of what has been there before. Uh, fixing those bugs, no way to backport it, so we have to wait with our software until 5.18 comes out and until our customers start adopting 5.18, which will take two, three years. Okay. Jeffrey Friedel, I think, that's the guy who has written the Mastering uh, Regular Expressions. Um, for a long time, I have read in the Perl to do, uh, requested, for example, set operations on regular expressions, which is something similar we did. Imagine you have a regular expression and you would like to tell the regular expression, negate yourself. Yes. Or you would like not to have just the alternation, but you would like to say these things in the catcher logically concatenate by and, not by or. These things. Then you have negative look behinds. They cannot have a variable with because our regular expression engine cannot perform regular matches backwards. So our negative look behinds have to be fixed with. 
not so regular expressions in C sharp. So why the hell don't we have something I thought we have, the best regex engine for this? So of course we can do also technology. You know, the right things. Yeah, that's it again. Um, I announced this shouldn't be a one to n lecture, but a n to n virtual. And I really, really, really would appreciate some feedback. So ask, please, say something. Where can we read the PetaMem testimonial for using Polo? For example, on the page which should appear, in my opinion, on the Perl Foundation's, you know, testimonials there, be sure I'll be one of the first writing it. And if you've heard, uh, if you've read, for example, the text um, now in the sponsors, um, yeah, look, look up our text in the sponsors section. It's not just about us. It's all about Perl. Basically, what I say there is um, that Perl, we are in a lucky situation because Perl, done by a linguist, used in computational linguistics, allows us to declass our competition who is not using it. Yes, so for us, Perl is not just, you know, programming language, it's a core technology, and so on. I can very well formulate that one out on official testimonial pages. There are none. Yes. We need to get them done. If Perl is our life support, it is now, it might shorten a bit if we don't do something. Um, is calling Perl 6, Perl 6 an advantage to it? Or a disadvantage? You know, I see it the following way. Currently, when I say Perl, I mean both. And I wouldn't like to distinguish. In a Perl FAQ 1, which would be completely rewritten and same, if someone asks, what is Perl? Then the answer would be, currently, currently, you probably mean Perl 5. In the future, it may very well may be Perl 6. But there has to be a migration path, because, you know, if you are a Perl programmer and you want to attract newbies, uh, you have the entry level to make as low as possible for them. If you are a Perl 6 guy, not interested perhaps in Perl 5 or yes, and you want to attract people to Perl 6, even from the Perl 5 community, you have to make their entry barrier as low as possible. Same thing applies. Yes. And if I uh, should, I say it to you the following, following way. Um, we're using 98, 99% Perl programs, sources for our applications and our company. Uh, there is no way I will migrate to Perl 6 unless I see, um, you know, an infrastructure and the will to support that language. So I do not see a, a Fraxilla there for users. I do not see a CPAN 6. Yes, I do not see <coughs> such a translator helping me migrating it. Help? Should I? Should I? Uh, engage, uh, you know, a swarm of students who will who will change arrows to dots or something like that. That's crazy. Yes. So that has to happen. <coughs> Same thing as for profile. Anybody else? Something. So I have a final question. What do you intend to do with the situation now that you've heard it? Put Perl programming in everything I write. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start them all. Yeah. <laughs> Journey of a thousand miles, fix single footstep. <clears throat> Is that the first thing that you'd hope that we would all do walking out of here? Well, I thought we, as we are here, um, are basically just one small part of the whole workshop and workshop is just one small part of the poor community and such. And I think these ideas have to propagate. Yes, not everyone has listened, had a chance to listen to it. Um, I think most people came in here, um, you know, thinking I will learn something about moves and this technology and I should do unit testing and so on. 
And it's my honest opinion. I've been thinking about this talk since YPC in Frankfurt, three months. Yes, and I came to think that, you know, the really, really, really important things are. My original talk wanted to start like, you know, we're using in the company, we have <coughs> shitty web pages. Why? They are 10 years old. They run the Zope application server using Python. And there is nothing, there is nothing, there is no uh, content management system, no modern content management system for Perl. Nothing. It's something built on Catalyst, for example. So, I want to upgrade our web pages, but as soon as we have the technology, because we have other Perl systems, and I would like the automatically generated documentation to be fed into the content management system. Yes, and not having to talk to some type of free PHP framework. And so. so, we don't have that. We're using track um, for our version control system. It's written in Python. Um, there, we use the own cloud infrastructure, you know, own cloud um, storage uh, system. It's written in PHP and so on. Why don't we have this, this, this? And then, I do because there are so few of us. So, what's important? Not that we work more on some project importance, we fetch some. Okay, yes, we are, we are finished, come in here. So, yeah, propagate it, think about it.